Lima looks so good in the prelim, so controlled. You know, he said he is here to win. He's not here to qualify. He is here to win this race today. Chalimo in the heats looked pretty composed. Here is the winner of the men's 10,000 metres, Woody Kincaid. What are your thoughts on Woody? Woody just needs to stick in there. Kincaid has the best kick of the field. He can't, you know, he needs to stick there when it going gets tough. If he can be there with a lap to go, his kick is so reliable. We also need to consider Emmanuel Bohr. Emmanuel, he, he trains with Chalimo. He ran the second fastest time by an American indoors this year. You know, he faltered a little bit in that 10K, but his training has been going well. He's confident. He trains with Chalimo. They're they're here together. They just are going to try to execute together. Nice warm reception, no pun intended, uh, for Woody Kincaid. <laughs> so who's going to Rio to represent Team USA in the 5,000 meter men's? We'll have that answer in less than a quarter of an hour. How do you see this? How do you see the complexion of this race? Are you anticipating just go to the front and go? Do you see people sitting? What do we expect in this one, Cara? You know, I think there's six athletes in this race with the Olympic standard. I think they'll let it settle in the beginning, but I do think we'll see a more aggressive race towards the end. We have a lot of fast finishers in this race, and I think things will get really spicy with six, five, four laps to go. But I think in the beginning, we're going to see, like we see right now, the favorites behind. Look at Chalimo just jogging in the back. He says, you know what? I'm not worried yet. There's plenty of racing to do. The weather is warm. I'm going to sit back here and wait till I have to get to work. It's Garrett Heath, Garrett Heath out in front in that bright yellow top. Garrett really performed well the other day. It was a uh, gutsy performance. Uh, and he got the auto qualified by finishing mm -hmm. fifth. You remember that? Really, he dug deep to get that top five in the heat and got that auto qualify and he's running very similar to how he did the other day he went to the front early the other day as well you know Heath has been around a long time this is his fourth olympic trials he has a lot of experience and that's why we saw him able to dig deep and pull back and get that spot in the prelim you know he's taking the lead here he really has nothing to lose he's not considered one of the favorites he's like you know what i'm going to get out come out here i'm going to run hard and i'm going to put myself in the best position to make that olympic team so you would imagine that there's going to be a lot of Oregon supporters screaming, yelling, clapping this young man in second place at the moment, the 21-year-old Oregon star who won the 5,000 metres earlier this month at the NCAA Championships. This is Cooper Tier, and he's a very confident, very capable young man. His family are here, as you can imagine, as well as with a throng of Oregon supporters. We're on the grounds of the University of Oregon, of course, do you see him making the t trip to Tokyo? He absolutely has a shot. If he can close the way he did at the NCAA championships, he is in contention. He does feel confident. He's trying to ride that momentum. He said, you know, I'm used to the, the stadium. I'm used to the loud crowds. That might overwhelm someone else. But for me, it's just being at home. So as we get into an early rhythm in this men's 5,000 meter final, it's time to say hi to Lewis Johnson. Lewis, when we came on the air, we said it was 88 degrees, but there's the temperature and then there's the feels like factor. How is it down there? It is very hot, Lee. I'd say the temperature on the track at least is 95 degrees and this rescheduled 5K is still a challenge for these athletes when it comes to heat. Uh, there are some cold towels being prepared for all the finishers underneath the stadium. They're being rolled up into that nice chilly water. They'll get those after their finish. And many of the athletes don ice best to try and keep their core temperature cool during warm-ups. Of course, pouring water on themselves, and there'll be a water table out here on the track to help them get a little bit of hydration as they compete. I spoke with USA team uh, track and field doctor Robert Chapman about the protocols. And he said the decision to move the start to this morning came due to a formula called WBGT, the wet bulb globe temperature. And basically that formula takes into consideration air temperature, humidity, and sun exposure. Uh, the expected conditions for the original start time in the afternoon indicated that the results and the of the formula would be above what was considered safe. And this final could have been postponed in that 115 degree weather we expect later today. So out here in the morning, but it's still hot again.
88 degree amp ambient temperature. I'd say the track is at least 95 degrees. Lee? Thank, thanks, Lewis. Nine laps to go in this men's 5,000 meter final. There's been a change at the front. Paul Chalimo, the favorite, heads the field over Woody Kincaid, Eric Jenkins, and then young Grant Fisher is in fourth place. For Jenkins there, center of your screen, running third. He said, I've never felt better, Cara, but yet I've never been so inconsistent. I've just got to keep showing up, and that result's going to come my way eventually. You know, he's fought so hard to be back here. He was fourth place, just six hundredths of a second behind Chalimo at the 2016 Olympic trials in this race, the 5,000 meters. He ran the 10,000 meters earlier in the meet, and, you know, he dropped out. And at first he said, you know, my body just wasn't responding. But later he said, you know, I got overwhelmed in the moment. I couldn't settle in. It was a little bit of anxiety. But he looked a lot better through the rounds of this. He's looking calmer and more collected. And, you know, he has just as good a chance as anyone else to make this team. Down the hot side of the track, the front stretch bathed in sunshine, temperatures broaching 90 degrees. And let's have a look at something that Paul Chalimo just said. Look at the front, top screen, looks around at Woody Kincaid. And is he saying, no, no, no? Did he tag him? I think that maybe Kincaid ran up on him a little bit and brushed him, which, by the way, happens all the time in these types of races. Everyone's packed together. Everyone's, you know, they're all in single file at this point. It is not unusual. Look at how high Chalimo's back kick is. Look at how long his leg is coming up in the air. It is not uncommon to, for you to clip someone behind you, and I think that's what happened. He had a little contact with Kincaid, and he was like, look out. But I don't think there was any real infraction there. Kincaid didn't do anything wrong. Chalimo, a native of Kenya who is now a naturalized American and has been for a long time, he said, look, I grew up in this kind of heat. For me, the hotter, the better. These temperatures, the change of schedule, whatever, it doesn't bother me. And, and when we watched his performance in the heats, it was so comfortable. He was so within himself. He said, look, it was just good to get the legs rolling. He said, I'm ready for this final as Kincaid eases his way into the lead with seven laps to go. You know, there's a little chatting going on there. They're looking at each other. I think Chalimo said something to Kincaid when he went by. And I don't know if Kincaid is sort of being forced in this position right now. He feels like Chalimo's getting mad at him, but he looks awfully relaxed, always with those arm sleeves. But he looks relaxed here as he goes to the front, and now Chalimo is going to be happy to sit behind him and let him pull him through for a while. And there's been some movement. Emmanuel Bohr, there he is right there, has gone up into the top three and is looking good. And Hassan Mead is going with him. Grant Fisher's dropped back. Cooper is now running a little further back, still in the top 10. You can see him in the white and green Oregon colors, a couple behind Grant Fisher. And you know, we see Hassan Mead now has moved into fourth place. He's been in this position before. He made the Rio Olympic team in 2016. He finished second at these Olympic trials. So he's used to dealing with this pressure. He trains here in Eugene. It's a home track advantage. He knows what it's like to have to face that pressure, to know that it's all coming down to this moment. And we see him putting himself in a position here now. I do have to say I like where Cooper Tier is right now. He's staying out of the fray. He's not chatting with anyone. He's not, you know, getting in with anyone. He's just sort of sitting in the back. He's still in contention. He's riding the train and he's conserving energy. I have to say I like where I see him right now, right behind Eric Jenkins. There's Nico Young in the yellow, right behind Garrett Heath. At just 18, this is a huge moment for this young man. Running with the pros and just learning a different kind of racecraft. Yeah, you know, this is just about experience for him. I would think that in three years' time, when we're prepping for the next Olympic Games, we'll be talking about Nico Young a lot. So we've told some tremendous stories during these trials of great accomplishments by mothers. How about the dad who leads the way? Paul Chilimo, his young daughter, Ariana, and as an active dad, and he's trying to balance, he and his wife trying to balance what they've got to do and as a mother you know this single hip carry not this on top of on top of the shoulders but every mum has a single hip carry because you've got to do stuff with the other hand right back the negative impact on paul it certainly did you know that happened to me when i was coming back from having my son always holding him on my left hip and i started to throw my left hip out and he ended up getting a hip injury as well from holding his daughter on the same side and you know we see that with women all the time 
But you can see that Paul Chalimo is helping take care of his daughter because he had a hip injury as well. All right, just take your pick. It's going to be one of those races. Emmanuel Bohr is out in front. Paul Chalimo, the white and red of Woody Kincaid with the Sonia Richards Ross arm sleeves. Why does he do that in the heat, in this extreme heat? I don't know. We'll have to ask him after. I have to say, I'm not really sure what the motivation is there, but that's where he feels comfortable. And, you know, they say don't change anything on race day. And, you know, that was a 68 second lap. That was the slowest lap we've seen so far. So I think we're going to start to see the pack come together a little bit, you know, reform a little bit here. We see a lot of men that are still in contention. We've seen the front lead change a little bit between three, four men. And again, I like where Cooper Tier is sitting in the back there. Eric Jenkins not getting caught up in the front, just riding that train, waiting until the true action starts. Four laps to go, and there's a little bit of Chalimo's getting upset with Hassan Mead. There's uh, more contact, and he's going to say, I'm going to get out of here so I don't get clipped again. By the way, the Olympic standard is 13, 13, 50. There are only six runners in this race who have already met that. Chalimo out in front, Kincaid, Bohr, Fisher, Jenkins, and Cooper Tia are the six athletes who have met that Olympic standard. Have a look at Paul Chalimo getting upset again. Watch the contact here between Hassan Mead. Oh, Mead just tapped him. And, and Chalimo saying, what do you want? I think Chalimo went to move out and Hassan Mead was like, hey, you know, I'm here. You know, Chalimo needs to let it go. Let it go. He has the, you know, he's such an accomplished athlete. He's been in these situations before. He's taken elbows before. He's gotten bumped before. And he doesn't need to waste any energy on scolding people as he's racing right now. He needs to just let it go and settle in. This is where he shines. You know, they're going to come up. They're going to have just a couple laps to go. And this is where he shines. All in blue with the white sunglasses on. That is Robert Brandt, who has run about 3,000 races lately. He's run so much the frequency is high and he goes to the front just like he did in the 10,000 meter final you know this is really impressive he ran the 5,000 and the 10,000 two weeks ago at the NCAA championship he ran the 10,000 meters here he ran the 5,000 prelim here he has put so many laps in here at Hayward Field in the last two weeks and I have to think he's running on tired legs at this point but he's using the enthusiasm of the crowd the enthusiasm of this experience and he's pushing himself to see can I do this can I get myself on an Olympic team so in the white and red the teammates from the Bowman track club Grant Fisher and Woody Kincaid believe it or not in between the final of the 10,000 meters and the heats of the 5,000 they went back to Park City Utah for some more altitude living you know their coach Jerry Schumacher really believes in altitude training believes it's so important to compete with the best so I'm not surprised to see that they did that but you know they also needed to recover from that 10k even though they looked comfortable in it they certainly ran hard and you know they just ran a 70 second lap before this and that's why i see now we're starting to see some moves be made it was just too slow for these men and now we see someone take the lead i believe that's that's Connor Manson. He's taken the lead. He's decided this is just too slow. I have to break this open. We can't sit here and jog during the Olympic trials final. The 24-year-old from Utah has hit the front, and he did that in his heat as well. By the way, the heat has got the best of Thomas Ratcliffe. He has left this race as we are inside the final two laps. Paul Chalimo second. Then Grant Fisher, Woody Kincaid, Robert Brandt, and Emmanuel Bohr. Then into the picture in the green and white, the University of Oregon's Cooper Tier is in the picture. No, this is a brave running by Mance. He said, I'm not going to sit around. I want this race to go. I'm not going to wait for the last 200 and let all these guys out kick me. So he's pulled this race out. Now they're actually really flying. You see people's strides are starting to open up. You see those back kicks starting to come up and the arms starting to bump. And again, look where Cooper Tier is lurking. He's run such a great race. And now they have less than four, just less than 500 meters to go here. Mance got muscled out. Here comes Beetlescombe. Morgan Beetlescombe has come up into this front group. Listen to the bell. One to go. You pick your winner as Cooper Tia is trying to go to the front to the roar of the Oregon crowd. This is so exciting. We have so many men still in contention. Only three can go to Tokyo. Who will make up the Olympic team? Grant Fisher is going step for step with the Olympic silver medalist and Woody Kincaid's not done with yet. Here comes Kincaid on the outside. Remember his tremendous kick in the 10K. You can't leave it to 200 with Woody Kincaid. He goes blackout crazy, and here we see it again. He's moving on the outside. Cooper T is still in it. They've dropped four. It's 
Chalimo, Fisher, Kincaid and Cooper Tia. This is a drag race down the final stretch. Paul Chalimo is not going to be denied. He's going to Tokyo with Grant Fisher and Woody Kincaid. 13-26-82 in a tremendous sprint to the finish. Chalimo wins and is off to Tokyo with two guys who are doing the 5K, 10K double. That may have been better than we even thought. That was so exciting. Chalimo just showed why he is a world championship bronze medalist and Olympic silver medalist. He knows when to pour it on. He knows where to find it. Grant Fisher fought him all the way down that line, and Kincaid was coming so hard, and he just came from within and pulled it out. That is why he is the man to beat. But what a race out of Cooper Tier. I am so impressed. He ran so smart, calm, collected. You know, you wouldn't know that he just finished up a collegiate season. He ran very, very smart, but just didn't have enough there in that final. Watch this on the final lap. Chalimo, Fisher, Kincaid, Tia, and this is where they drop Bohr. A fivesome becomes a foursome, and it's on. And look at how fast they're going here. They're going 17.45 miles per hour. This is incredible sprinting at the end of a hot, hot 5K. And we see Chalimo looking around. He is having to you know, dig deep there because Fisher is not relenting. Kincaid just runs out of room there. And we see Cooper's here in the you know, dreaded fourth position. What about 24-year-old Grant Fisher? Second in the 10,000, second in the 5,000. He wasn't going to get out kicked by his teammate today. You know, we saw Chalimo there move out. He was pushing them out. He was going to make them do the hard work to pass them. He was not going to give them the inside lane. As we see him here, he's moving out, moving out. He's going to make them work if they're going to pass him down that home stretch. And he makes them have to move out and out, and he holds them off. But I have to say, he looked controlled down the stretch. He had a great finish. His arms were pumping. It looked like he still had more to give if he needed to. At 30, the ageless... Paul Chalimo. Perhaps in Tokyo, he can turn silver into gold. He wasn't happy at various stages through that race. Lots of communication, lots of gestures.